Americans are struggling with. Cancer is the second leading cause of death in this country, leaving over half a million families each and every year without mothers, fathers, or children. But there's some good news. Canadian research team has come up with DCA. They believe it's a cheap and simple drug that kills almost all cancers. You heard that right. The real story is you can't have it. Not because it's unsafe, but because your blood's going to shoot out of your eyes because it doesn't make any money. You and I know there's big money to be made when pharmaceutical companies develop new life-saving drugs. But the gravy train doesn't last for long. After investing millions and millions of dollars into research and to the development of a new drug, companies only have a few years to make their money back, plus a profit, before their patent expires and competing companies can make a generic form of the same drug. So, back to this Canadian team and DCA. They're working out of the University of Alberta in Edmonton, Canada, and scientists have tested DCA on human cells cultured outside the body. They found that it killed lung, breast, and brain cancer cells, but not healthy cells. Got it? That's revolutionary. This is bordering on a cancer miracle. Tumors in lab rats that were deliberately infected with human cancer also shrank drastically when they were given DCA. So, where's the problem? Well, since DCA has no patent, that means it can be made generically from day one. No exclusivity equals no value. You know, I, I heard that today and I thought, you know, once in a while, maybe capitalism needs to be reminded of the value of human life. Dr. Evangelos Michalakis, he is uh, one of the leading researchers working on DCA out of the University of Alberta. Doctor, am I overstating this? Do you believe this is a cure for many cancers? Um, uh, I, I'm not sure I would uh, call it a miracle, Glenn. Um, it's a very promising um, advance, but there have been a lot of miracles in medicine, in uh, lab animals, and in test tubes that never translate into miracles in actual human beings. Okay, now you, so can, there are a lot of reasons can yeah, to, you, be, can to you, be optimistic about it. Can you do these uh, studies, and how long will it take? Uh, we are about to start these clinical trials in human beings uh, here at the University of Alberta and we think we'll be starting uh, somewhere in the next uh, couple of months. It will take several months to complete the first stage of these trials to know at least that this drug is effective in human beings as it was in human cells out of the body. Was this drug used for anything else? Is this drug yeah. on the market for anything else right now? It's not in the market and it cannot, you cannot find it in pharmacists. You can buy it in bulk from chemical companies, uh, cell chemicals. Uh, however, it has been used for over 30 years to treat uh, very rare conditions uh, of metabolism, usually in children. Um, universities usually buy the drug in bulk, they process it, and then they treat these very, very rare conditions. We know that it's uh, relatively well tolerated. There are some, some mild toxicities in, in these patients. But, of course, we don't know how patients with cancer will react okay. to that. So th this is something you can buy at a chemical company. There are going to be people who read about this, like I did today. If I had cancer, i, I got to tell you, I'm not waiting the two years for the human trial. I, I, if, if this has killed these things, lung and breast and, and what was the other, brain cancer, if it's killed these things in test tubes and in, and in lab rats, what's going to stop somebody who has nothing left to lose from going and finding some of this stuff and taking it? That's a very important question, and in fact, we've been bombarded with this question. But you've got to keep in mind that it is possible it might hurt someone. For example, a lot of these patients are already taking cancer medications, and the interactions of this drug and any drug with the existing drugs is unpredictable. You, it could result in worsening than uh, improvement. Wow. So these clinical trials are really important to be performed appropriately and under the regulation of authorities like uh, FDA or Health Canada. I, I, I have to tell you, I, uh, while I see your point, I got uh, you know, if I'm dying of cancer and I know I'm going to die anyway, what, I mean, how am I going to get worse than death? You had a hard time getting anybody to pay attention to this because there's no money to be made in this. Why don't the insurance companies get involved and pour money into this? There's a ton of money to be saved by insurance companies. Why isn't the capitalist system working on that front? 
That's a very interesting uh, question, and you're right. You would expect. I, I think there are some laws preventing the insurance company in investing in research, but I, I'm not a, a, a lawyer to tell you that. I think there is some regulations. It's not that easy to do that. However, the, the, the authorities like the University of Alberta and the Faculty of Medicine and Dentistry have already uh, committing and they're helping us uh, along with the people of Alberta that already started donating uh, money to, um, to at least make uh, the first step. All right. Doctor, thank you very much. That is the real story tonight. If you'd like to find out about this story or you'd like to tell us about another real story of your own, please click on to www.glenbeck.com. Hit that real story button. All this through in the fight against cancer from the University of Alberta tonight. Researchers there have found a certain compound can shrink cancer tumors in the lung, breast, and brain. And best of all, it's non-toxic. As Sue Ngo reports, it could be a more compassionate form of chemotherapy. Sandy McDougall has been through chemotherapy three times. Each time, she was nauseated for months and lost all of her hair. When you lose your hair, you first lose the hair on the top of your head. But then you lose your eyebrows and the last to go are your eyelashes. And that's like the final injustice. Rather than be bald in public, this breast, liver and brain cancer survivor wore wigs. She believes chemotherapy is especially hard on women. We put so much credence in, in our hair and the way we look and, and to not have it um, or to have it look unnatural was the hardest part for me. But U of A researchers may have found a kinder, gentler cancer treatment. Unlike traditional chemotherapy drugs, dichloroacetate, or DCA, kills cancer cells only and doesn't affect healthy cells. When you take chemotherapy, you get nauseated because the, 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 the drug kills the stomach cells or, or your heart dysfunctions because you kill the heart cells or your skin or you lose your hair. None of these things appear to be affected by the DCA. The team implanted human lung tumors in live rats, taking photos inside this special scanner. Then the rats drank a DCA solution. Just three weeks later, the tumor, this purple blob, had shrunk from this to this. The tumor is significantly decreased. Decreased by up to 70 percent, with no negative side effects for the rat. Dr. Evangelos Michalakis explains cancer changes a cell's metabolism, making it resistant to death. By restoring normal energy production with DCA, the cancer cell can be killed and healthy cells untouched. It appears to have to hit a sensitive nerve in cancer, a fundamental uh, uh, trick that cancer does to stay alive. Sandy says chemotherapy without nausea and hair loss sounds almost too good to be true. Something like this would be the most fantastic thing ever. And if she ever does have to go through cancer treatment again, she'd be thrilled to keep her wigs in the closet. It would just be such a joyous thing for an oncologist to tell a woman that you're not going to lose your hair. For Global News, this is Sue Lingo reporting. The drug has passed stage one trials, but researchers have yet to try it on cancer patients. They're now in the process of securing public funding, none from drug companies, so the drug can be available inexpensively, and they hope to start mass clinical trials within the next year.